So we're going to continue with maintenance. So, uh, Marcus. Yes, thank you. Uh, you can jump to the next slide right away. My name is Marcus Gabelson. I work as a, a national coordinator at maintenance development. Uh, I will present you some business opportunities on maintenance project, but first some overall information. Next slide, please. Uh, maintenance is responsible for making Sweden closer to the safe and accessible roads and railways that need society needs for travel and transport today and in the future. We are productive plant manager and professional clients. We succeed in collaboration to the, our leadership employeeship. Next, please. The target of maintenance is that we have a sustainable and connected facility by 2025. For the plan to do, be sustainable, we focus on it being robust, safe, environmental and climate smart. For the plan to be connected, we focus on increasing of the degree of automation in digitalization to new technologies. Next, please. The annual turnover of railway and road man maintenance is approximately 19 billion Swedish crowns. Just to take the next slide, please. The 10 largest suppliers account for around 11.5 billion, 68% of the total per case volume. 80% of the total volume is represented by about 30 suppliers. But in the some areas, we have a few suppliers, for example, in basic maintenance and construction. Next, please. Maintenance railway. The maintenance of the network is divided by base rail, totally 34 contracts, traffic information, non-line power, detectors, and national contract. Next slide, please. Uh, base rail. During 2021 and 2022, we have 18 procurements, about half of our railway facility. The basic contracts include corrective and preventive maintenance of tracks, signals, and overhead contract lines, as well as operational measures such as snow removal and in a given geographical area. The term of the contract is normally five years with the possibility of a one or two year option. Tenders evaluate at lowest price. Consultants procurements for 40 to 80 million. The total volume of base contract is 4 billion a year. Next slide, please. All contracts is based on a geographical area and it's normally five years uh, for other railway contracts. Traffic info includes maintenance of displays, signs and speakers. We have four contracts with a total volume of 95 millions, millions a year. Detector include maintenance of different types of detectors such as wheel damage and pantographs. We have two contracts with a total volume of 36 million a year. And non-line non power includes maintenance of static and rotating converters. And then we have five contracts with a total volume of 410 million a year. Next, please. And other rail contracts, uh, national contracts with a total volume of approximately 400 million a year is death sleepers, tree securing, clearing after tree securing, risk tree measures, ultrasonic control, grinding rails, supply lines and traffic road, traffic load information. You can take the next slide please. The maintenance road, the outcome 2019 was uh, 9.3 billion and for 2020 around 9.5 billion and the frame for 
2021 to 2023 is around 10 billion. You can take the next one. The maintenance of road is divided by base contract, paving, including road marketing, construction, infrasystem, and some other maintenance of road equipment, uh, rest areas, gravel road, ET construction, traffic management systems, and so on. Can take the next one. Base road. Basic maintenance includes all the maintenance, inspections and ongoing maintenance of road and its site, its sides areas, as well as other facilities included in the road system. The task is to keep the road network accessible and safe for road users in the short term. It's about ensuring road safety and accessibility, but also about being able to deal with situations that have arose urgently for example, storms. Contract includes winter road maintenance, plowing and anti-slip, management of gravel roads, paved roads and walking and cycling paths. Maintenance of rest areas, clearing and moving, maintenance and repair of road equipment, regular inspection of the road network. The contract concern uh, the maintenance of the roads in a given geographical area. Currently, there are 111 areas, each considering of 70 to 175 mile road. The term of the contract is normally four years with a possibility of a one or two year option. Tenders evaluate at lowest price. We have 20 to 25 procurements per year, total volume of approximately 4 billion, and the total volume of base contracts is 3.8 billion a year. Next, please. Paving and road marketing, uh, four to five procurements per year, and total volume of approximately 320 million at the road marketing, uh, paving 75 procurements a year and uh, a volume of about 2 billion. Can take the next one. Uh, construction work road. Bridge maintenance consists from multi-annual geographical contracts for smaller maintenance operation to separate contract from major operations on specific bridges approximately 50 procurements per year and total value of 1 billion a year. And design approximately 75 contracts a year, uh, 50 to 70 million a year. Can take the next one. Uh, and the examples of infra systems are ventilation system and fans in tunnels, lifts, pumping station and lightning fixtures. You can take the next one, please. And the infrasystem road, we have 40 to 50 procurements per year. The total construction value is 650 million a year. And the consultants and design approx uh, 150 million a year. We can take the next slide, please. Uh, if you're interested to know more about our maintenance procurements, so do not hesitate to contact me or my colleagues, and we will come back with some more information. You can take the next slide, and I will thank you for listening out. Thank you, Marcus. Uh, we will continue with uh, another of our major projects is the crosslink um, uh, connection. So, Klaus, are you ready? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, very good. Well, this is about the Sertan crosslink uh, uh, connection. It's a it's a major road project in the Stockholm area, southeast area of Stockholm. 
Uh, in fact, it's the biggest upcoming road project in Sweden. Uh, and it's connecting to the another big project, even bigger, Ferbifot Stockholm. Uh, in fact, the start of this project will be the end of, of the other big project. Uh, well, why are we doing this? Uh, <clears throat> th this uh, stretch here is at the moment served by a, a small road, very small road, and a lot of accidents. Uh, it's only two lanes, and there is uh, very much traffic and also heavy traffic. Uh, and that has been worse since uh, in the east from this picture, we have a new harbor opened to 2020. So. So uh, it's, it's a really difficult uh, situation. In fact, I'm happy I don't have a picture to show you because it doesn't look good at all. And there is also no cycle uh, or, or walking path. So some people cycle among all that traffic as well. And th that's not good at all. Um, so I think we can take the next picture. Well, there's lots of, a lot of things to do here. 20 kilometers of road, uh, eight interchanges, big interchanges. The speed will be 80 to 100 kilometers per hour. Two plus two lanes and a lot more in some of the interchanges. 25% is in tunnels. There are three big tunnels. Uh, and there will be a new cycle and pedestrian path. And we are, are looking at construction period from approximately 2024 to 2033. Uh, next picture, please. Uh, of course, in this big project, we have wishes for a sustainable, sustainable transportation system. Uh, you can take the next one. We will primarily work in, in these areas to reduce climate impact, electrified construction, digitalized construction and automated construction. Uh, we look forward to, to use that too. And of course, optimized mass management. Uh, next one, please. Uh, these are the business opportunities that are, are still on the table. Uh, two consulting contracts for construction will be procured next year. Five consulting contracts for installations a little later. Uh, nine road construction contracts and five installation contracts in fact that might be three instead or even one we haven't decided that yet and the procurement period will be from 22 to 26 approximately next slide please well here you can see uh, the the different uh, con construction contracts in in the left we start with uh, the German interchange in the Robert Bridges. That's a big uh, project that I will show you uh, a little bit later. And then we go on with a tunnel, an interchange, a tunnel, uh, and then two interchanges. And this one the, in the middle here, Sulgård is particularly complicated because we have the southern and western man, main line passing through the working area. Uh, I'll show you a little bit more about that one later. And then we have the biggest tunnel, Fleming Spur Tunnel. It's uh, more than three kilometers long. And on top of it, there is a nature conservation area. So this makes this even more difficult. This is also one reason that this project has been delayed because it's a sensitive area that we are moving through. And uh, the first steps to, to build this road was taken 20 years ago and it was started and stopped a couple of times and now we start restarted in 2014 and uh, we we look forward to go into the national plan in the end of this month so that we can be 100 percent sure to do this but i don't think there is any doubt that we will build this because it's very much needed uh, and then we have two more norm normal paths normal roads with uh, two interchanges in each in in the end here in the eastern end uh, and as you can see in the left, we have a lot of installations uh, coming up, mainly in the tunnels, of course, but uh, alongside all the road, there are installation uh, parts to, to uh, solve. All right, next picture, please. Well, these are the construction contracts, uh, as I just mentioned. You can see there are different sizes two to three billion are the biggest one uh, and down to five to seven hundred million kronos 
to six billion kron kronas we are talking about here. Uh, and um, the consultant assignments are approximately 30 to 15 billion, depending on what, how we, what kind of a contract we decide to make up. Uh, we can go up the next picture, please. These are the two consultant contracts. Take the next picture, please. Um, this is in the end of the road here. Uh, and we will uh, buy procurement documents for road construction. Normally, we do this for design and build of, uh, in this type of contracts. But in fact, we are considering a bid and build contract for one on stretch. Uh, that will be the same decided during the winter. Uh, and the contract for it is about two years. It will be probably a little longer if we decide to make uh, procurement documents for for a bit of this project. And the total cost, 80 million, maybe a little more. If it is design and build, a little more uh, if we have a, a bit of build contract in one of them. Uh, well, I won't go into that, but this, this has come up lately. There is uh, thoughts about uh, connecting a, 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 a the university and, and study and compare the two stretches. All right, go to the next one, please. And these are the construct contracts that have come up at first, 23 and 24. Uh, this is the Yammer and Interchange to Robert Bridges. Uh, it's a design and build contract. We we'll, uh, plan to pub publish the procurement in uh, April 23. The contract will be seven to eight years, and the cost is about two to three billion Swedish kronos. Uh, you can see here that the E4, E20, this is where the further fast stocking is constructed. So we will connect to that before we go to the to the certain crosslink in the bottom of, of this little picture. Next picture, please. Uh, well, there's a lot of content here, of course. Uh, you can see uh, the tunnel is not included here. It's the next contract, but there's a lot of long, uh, lo long uh, uh, exit ramps and the, and here is a big bridge here to, to the right, which crosses a, a seaway, a major seaway, in fact. So there is two bridges that will be constructed. And when they are finalized, we will take away the two old bridges. A lot, lot of work for this, of course. And then there's big free cutting you can see here uh, in the tunnel mouth. Uh, and a lot of pumping station, electric space operation areas, and etc. About 90,000 cubic meters of concrete and 280,000 cubic meters of rock excavation, and total 20 new bridges. A big contract. Uh, next one, please. This is uh, the Glamster Tunnel. It's one of the smaller tunnels, uh, and it will be. Uh, Publicate, pub, we publish it uh, one year later, uh, about in uh, five years. We, we think this one will take to build about 700 million to a, a billion Swedish cross. We can go to the next picture. Uh, this is about 1100 meters, <clears throat> two tunnels, two lanes, a big pre cut that is. 25 meter high and as uh, high as piece um, and um, two big electric sp operating spaces and free water sewage pumping stations and about 300 cubic meters of rock excavation and 200 meter excavation above ground uh, and on the ends to about 250 meters of rock that needs station with lime sediment columns <clears throat> next one please And this is the soil gold interchange. Uh, the one I mentioned before, where we have the uh, main line passing through. Uh, 
also plan to be published in 24 April. Uh, six years period of construction, a billion to one to two billion cost. Uh, probably the upper range there. We can take next picture, please. Uh, this is uh, the interchange. It is in three levels. In fact, you can see the third level uh, in this picture. So, so the railway is passing underneath here. And of course, this is a major challenge. We have the two major main lines in Sweden uh, passing through the working area through all of the period. So that would be a, a, a really complex situation uh, from many aspects. Uh, <clears throat> but here is also eight bridges, a, a concrete tunnel, 100 feet and 70 meters long. And two concrete trays, cycle pedestrian path, 1300 meters, two water pump station. And of course, since we have railway, we have also best work in this one. The main problem is uh, that we either need to move the railway for uh, a part of the stretch, so we can construct what we need to construct, or we have to build temporary bridges. Problem is the, the temporary bridges that we need are longer than the ones that we normally use. And also, of course, the operators of the railway don't think that they need to uh, lower the speed when we're doing this, but they will have to figure out, of course. All right, next picture, please. Uh, this is the biggest tunnel, Femiverse tunnel. Uh, it's uh, It will be procured at the same time as TC 101, the first uh, contract I mentioned uh, in April 23. Uh, contract period five years and an estimated cost about one and a half to two billion Swedish kronos. Next picture, please. Well, it's three or three kilometers tunnel and two lanes, two tunnels with two lanes in each, and uh, a lot of excavation, of course, concrete walls four elected operation spaces and three pumping stations, water pump station, 20 escape routes. And there is also a road 800 meters and a concrete trail 250, 250 meters. Uh, a big contract, this one, and also the other tunnel, will be a bid and build contracts, or if you prefer performance contract. But the concrete work will be designed by, by the contractor not by us. Okay, next picture, please. And, and needless to say, I don't think I said it, but the, the, the soon got into change with railway. It's a, a designable contract. Right, we have a, a few words about installation contracts. So we're, we're planning five designable contracts, but we might change that into three or one. Uh, we'll, I publish the, the procurement in uh, June 2025. So that's the plan. Six years it will take. This will go on after everything else is, is finalized. And uh, an estimated cost seven to 100 million kronos to a billion. Uh, okay, pick next picture. Yeah, here you can see different contracts. That is that is what it looks like now. And you can also see the consulting assignment connected to this, which we plan to to publish the procurement in February 2023. Uh, I don't think we will uh, put the consulting assignments together. It would be more likely to put uh, to, uh, the installation contracts works together. All right, I think we can take the next picture. Ah, there we are. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me. You are welcome. I will do my best to help you. And thank you very much for listening to this presentation. All right, bye-bye. Thank, thank you, Klaus. Uh, we will continue with our new main lines. And first up is the East Link project, followed by uh, Gothenburg Bros and Hessel Hongland. So please, Johan, Tom, and Aleka. 
Thank you. My name is Johan Sundin and I'm Project Manager for, for Strategic Construction Support at the Eastlink Project. And today I am accompanied by my colleague Tom Tuhag, Project Engineer, and Ulrika Hallgren, who is the Project Manager for the Call Modern contract, the biggest con construction contract in this uh, project. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, Traffic Verket has been tas tasked to build new main lines between the three biggest cities in Sweden. And this is due to the fact that it's a very uh, popular to, to, to uh, travel by train in Sweden. It has doubled the last 25 years. And also the goal of a fossil free society, as uh, Camilla talked about earlier this morning. Uh, we have three ongoing projects. It's the Eastlink project uh, south of Stockholm, in the east of Sweden, Gothenburg, Borås in the west of Sweden, and Hesleholmlund in the south of Sweden. Those are ongoing and financed projects. And for the stretches in between, we have made the early uh, feasibility studies, but there are no funding for that at the moment. Next, please. So the new main lines is we're going to build 360 kilometers of double track uh, uh, intended for high speed trains up to 320 kilometers an hour and fast regional trains. Uh, there will be no traf freight traffic on these lines. And the strategy is to have the tracks available for passenger traffic for eight hours a day. And then we have a six hour window dedicated to maintenance every night. Next, please. <clears throat> and uh, the East Link will run between uh, just south of Södertälje, south of Stockholm, and down to the city of Linköping. Uh, which this is a very densely populated area, so the, the commuter traffic between the cities are very uh, in, uh, intense. Uh, I can mention that Linköping is the fifth biggest city in Sweden and Norrköping the ninth biggest city in uh, Sweden. Yes, next please. So the Eastlink project, we're going to build 160 kilometers of, of double track, ballasted track. And the, the, the sign speed is 250 kilometers an hour. Estimated cost is 8.2 billion euros. And uh, the, uh, the goal is to, to start operating the, the stretch in 2035. Next, please. Uh, and of this uh, 160 kilometers, about 15% will run in tunnels. Uh, and the longest tunnels uh, are uh, four, seven, and eight kilometers long. So that will be a very big tunneling contract. Uh, Ulrika will talk more about that, the longest tunnel later. We're also going to build 150 railway and road bridges, uh, five stations, uh, one of them at the Skafta airport. And we're going to handle about 20 million cubic meters of rock and soil masses. So that's a major challenge. Uh, next, please. This is the time schedule. Uh, since a number of years, we've we'll been working with the early plans, uh, regular plans, system documents, and so on. Uh, in order to get the other legal permits that we need to start construction and to uh, buy the land that we need. But we have already made some, some uh, construction works. Uh, for example, new harbor line in the city of Norrköping. Uh, and we are next year going to start building a new marshalling yard in Norrköping. We have to move that uh, in order to be able to build a high speed line. Uh, in 2023, we're going to, to renew the Linköping Travel Center. Uh, and in 2024, we will start the actual uh, construction of the, the high speed line part itself. And the aim is to start uh, the traffic in 2035. Next bill. 
Yes. So I'm going to leave out this now to Tom. Yes, thank you, Johan. I hope you hear, hear me as well. Uh, yes. So as you can see in this slide, we have listed some of the challenges that we have within the product. And uh, first of all, from a Swedish point of view, the EaseLink is referred as a mega project. And we are, we are actually the biggest infrastructure project that we have in Sweden. And uh, this, of course, implies a well-functioning product management. In a quite easy view, you could say that the product by itself consists of several products that all has to be managed in the same direction. To, this to reduce the interfaces and actually to enable the construction of the project as one system. And if I want to, if I am to uh, pinpoint one challenge that we have within the product, I would say it's the one regarding resources and competence. Uh, as it looks like today, we do not have the enough of resources, resources and competence within Sweden to actually to complete the East Link or the new mainlands as a whole. And therefore, it's really important to us to reach out to you as international suppliers and make you interested in our in our contracts and assignments. And it's also important uh, that you, if you would like to come to and work in, in Sweden and for the Eastlink products, for instance, that you also bring both uh, white collar workers and blue collar workers. Uh, if we look at the technolo technological aspects, uh, we will build the double track tunnels within the Eastlink. And this will cause some issues regarding aerodynamics in the tunnels. Uh, also, as we have listened before, we have quite high standards and requirements regarding noise protection in Sweden, and particularly in the Eastlink project where we will have a um, new high speed lane. Uh, and finally, uh, finally, we do have a lot of masses that we need to handle along the stretch of the Eastlink. This is, consists of both the rock and soil masses, and that we need to take care of this in a sustainable way. So we can switch to the next slide, please. And the sustainability issues are a common thread through all our work and it consists of three dimensions. We have the ecological, economic and social sustainability. And here it's really important to remind that both we as a client and you as a supplier uh, all have a responsibility to consider these three dimensions in our daily work. And one example could be for the upcoming contracts where we have quite high standards and requirements regarding the CO2 reductions that we saw before. Next slide, please. Uh, there are uh, several aspects that we would like to discuss with you from the supply market. And the one such uh, aspect is the one regarding industrialization. Here, I should say that we are in a quite early phase in these type of questions. Uh, but we do think that industrialization is the key to success, uh, which of course both can generate cost reductions and also savings for the climate, which is really good. Uh, some examples for industrialization within the EastLink could be to have uh, an offsite construction and prefabrication, but also to have a mod modularization and repeatability both in the production phase and also in the construction phase, of course. And uh, one other example could be to have smart logistics regarding the material in the contracts. So next slide. And something that I think is, the one thing that I think is most of interest for you as suppliers is the, uh, is the questions regarding business opportunities. And uh, in the next couple of slides, I will show you some uh, some numbers and the division, how we will try to package our contracts. But before I do that, I would like to say that we are in the final phase of revising our packaging contracts and the sign assignments within this link. And therefore, the numbers given in these couple slides are just preliminary. And hopefully, we are able to communicate a more detailed contract division soon. I know that uh, the board of Sarfik Beckett will take a decision regarding our packaging uh, of contracts. Uh, spring 2022. Uh, if we start with the civil works, uh, here we will have a mix of contract size, as you can see on this slide, from about 10 million euros up to 700 million euros. And our idea is to include all the civil works that are located in, this, in a certain area in the same contract. And there will also be a variation in business form regarding the civil works. 
but to a great extent, we will have a design plus build contract for a lot of the civil works. Next slide. If we then look into the railway works, uh, in Sweden, we usually combine the track, the electricity, signaling and telecommunication in the same contract, which is called the best contracts. And this is also our idea to do in the Eastlink product. Uh, these contracts for the railway works will be performance contracts, also called build only contracts, which means that we will procure the, the design assignments separately from the construction works. And the contracts for the construction works will be around 50 to 100 million euros each. Next slide, please. So if we try to summarize the packaging of contracts, we will in total have about 26 main construction contracts. And we'll also procure 50 enabling work, about 50 enabling works contracts, which will, which will be procured separately. Uh, but as I said before, these numbers are just preliminary at the moment. Next slide, please. And besides the construction contracts, we will also procure a lot of design assignments. Uh, we do have a volume of about 200 to 300 million euros in total for the design phase. And the largest assignments here will be for the detailed design for performance contracts, but also reference design for design plus build contracts. Uh, we will then also procure other types of consultancy services, such as, which you can see here as technical support, second opinion, supervision of contra contracts, etc. And uh, we'll start the procurement of, uh, with one uh, design assignment regarding the railway works in the next couple of weeks or so, where, we tr where we're aiming to publish that assignment, that procurement. And next on, my colleague Ulrike will take over and show you some insight in one, tip, one specific uh, civil work contract. So I'll let her speak forward. Hello everyone, my name is Ulrike Hallgren and I'm the project manager for uh, this uh, large uh, contract for civil works uh, called Kolmården. Uh, next slides please. Uh, this uh, project is placed uh, north of Nor Norrköping but close to the city. Uh, it's, as I said, one of the biggest contract in Ostlänken and it will be 15 kilometers of civil works, build only, performance contract. But the bridges in this contract will be design and build contract and it will be included in the build only contract. So we will have one supplier for these 15 kilometers of civil works. And uh, here we have the eight kilometer long tunnel, as Johan mentioned. Uh, so it's half of the project is this eight kilometer of tunnel. Uh, we have a lot of sustainability and environmental regulation uh, on this uh, project because it's a sensitive area. We have water right court uh, for the tunnel, but also for culvert and road drains. So totally it's three water rights uh, in this project uh, to uh, take places to. We also have several regulations for nature, culture, because this is the area for outdoor life for citizens in Norrköping. Uh, so uh, during summer, uh, there are lots of um, walking, bathing and, and other uh, kind of activities going on here. So we, we will have several regu regulations to take care of. There is also a difficult pass Passage crossing the existing roads and existing railway, uh, the Nyköpingsbana. Uh, we will also pass uh, the Kadombana, who is the existing uh, freight traffic uh, railway. Uh, and uh, the project is located close near to E4 in Sweden, who is the artery for road traffic in Sweden. So it will be quite complex. 
Uh, and as you all can understand, um, the mass balance here is a challenge. But we, as a client, will create opportunities for, for this mass balance uh, before uh, the civil works starts. Next slide, please. Here you can see uh, the 15 kilometers of civil works. Uh, and the, as I said, the bridges is included in, in this, but will be design and build contract. And we will come to this later. So the tunnel is uh, eight kilometers. And there also will be a service tunnel, who is almost eight kilometers. And as uh, Johan and Tom mentioned, this is a double tracks tunnel that we will build. We are planned for four quite long working tunnels uh, to get the access to build this tunnel. And two of these working tunnels will be closed after production and two tunnels will be remained uh, for as access road for the service tunnel. And in this tunnel, we will have 19 pieces of connection tunnels between the main, main tunnel and, and the service tunnel. Uh, at both ends, there have to be concrete tunnels. Um, and also in the north of this project, we have a, a long rock cutting uh, that is two kilometers to take care of. So it's almost rock and cutting and tunnel in, in this project, not so much um, embankment as you can see. Uh, and we will also do the channeling for uh, for cables. Yes, next please. Uh, at this uh, project, we will have 10 bridges. Uh, most most of them are, are not so long uh, and five of them are railway bridges and five of them are road bridges. For the railway bridges, we have one long bridge who is uh, almost 700 meters, and that's the one who will pass over uh, the, the new shopping secondary line and two uh, local roads. So that will be quite complex and it's um, placed quite near the south, uh, south uh, tunnel. And we will also have to build East Link. Uh, uh, so we cross the Kadonbanan, who is the, uh, as I said, uh, the freight uh, line on railway here, and, and that that will be uh, three bridges that have to be, go uh, under the Kadonbanan. That will also be complex uh, works. And for the road bridges, we have uh, one uh, bridge is over the highway of E4. Uh, so it will be quite much uh, bridges in here. And as I said, they will be design and build contract. Uh, next, please. Here is the preliminary time schedule for this project. Um, and at the moment, we are creating uh, documents uh, to, be, uh, to buy the design, design contract for this uh, project. Uh, and the plan is to procure this uh, during the end of 2022. And there will be two years uh, for design. And then we have uh, uh, the, the procurement for the contractor. And then uh, we can see this is six years of building for this, uh, for this contract. And parallel to our work, and there is another project work with the delivery of preliminary design, uh, as we will get now uh, at the end of 2021. And they also work with the set for the railway plan, and they also work with the permits for water activities. Yes, I'm... Okay, thank you, Rika. I move on now how we will proceed at the Eastlink project. And for the last, the large assignments and contracts, we will uh, pre-qualify a number of suppliers that we invite for tendering. 
uh, during the tendering time, we will have mid bid meetings where you can meet with us and uh, ask questions about the, the tender documents. And as Tom said earlier, we will have high requirements regarding environment, work environment, and social responsibility. And also, we expect to have a high level of cooperation between client and supplier. Uh, next, please. So, uh, as also Camilla said earlier, it's very important that you uh, team up uh, with a Swedish partner or hire Swedish uh, employees uh, and use your contacts to do uh, our business Sweden and invest in Stockholm. Uh, they are in uh, entities that work with these, uh, these uh, matters, uh, business Sweden on the national level and in the Stockholm local in the Stockholm area. And east, in the east of Sweden, well, Linköping and uh, Norrköping and, and, and Nyköping is uh, or We also have the local chamber of commerce who so have an uh, own uh, entity for, for these matters. So uh, these three contacted persons are, could be very useful. Uh, next, please. Yeah, we have our, our own website where you can follow us, uh, English website, and uh, you, you can also see contact details either to me or to Mr. Hovland, who is head of procurement at Eastlink Project. Uh, thank you. I think that's what the, was the last slide for us. Thank you. Thank you, Johan, Tom, and uh, Ulrika. We will continue with uh, the next new main lines, which is Gartenberg Bros. So, Jessica, you're up. Thank you very much, Camilla. Uh, very nice to be here, everybody, to speak a bit about the Gothenburg Boroughs uh, project within the new main lines. Uh, please switch slides. So here you have a picture of me. My camera has been a bit uh, fussy today, so I'm not going to switch it on. Uh, so my name is Jessica Dosenius. I am the head of procurement for the Gothenburg Boroughs uh, project within the new main lines. I have two colleagues with me today. Uh, maybe Thomas and Maria can introduce yourselves. Uh, yes, uh, Thomas Rayner. I'm a project manager for the stretch between Mendel and Landwetter uh, Airport. And my name is Maria Fransson and I'm the head of our technical and environmental specialists. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Thomas will be coming back uh, in a short while to speak about our localization study that is ongoing. So um, Alan, could you just press maybe twice more so we can get the text that comes under? Yeah. So the western part of Sweden uh, is expanding at a rapid rate. We have annually about 9.5 million commuter travel being done between Gothenburg and Borås, which are the two largest uh, cities in the region. And at the moment, uh, bus and car are the most common means of transport, uh, since we have a single track railway today that um, goes on quite slowly. So mainly everybody chooses um, bus and uh, car. And this, of course, means a quite a large environmental footprint that, of course, we would like to reduce by constructing this new um, double track railway between Gothenburg and Borås. Next slide, please. So we have identified four uh, advantages with a new railway between these two large cities, Gothenburg and Borås in the western part of Sweden, is of course to increase uh, the speed of fast railway travel between these two cities, uh, increase the amount of trains running between Gothenburg and Borås, and of course focus on sustainability that you mentioned uh, for the East Link. Of course, we have the focus is just as large here as well. Uh, so sustainable travel is, uh, is key. And also, of course, to take the train to and from uh, Landbetter Airport, which is the second largest airport in, in Sweden, and of course, from both directions, Borås and Gothenburg. Next slide, please. So, some facts of uh, the Gothenburg Borås project. We will be constructing uh, approximately 60 kilometers of double track, it will be a ballasted track, and a uh, top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. And uh, important to note, only high-speed trains and fast regional trains will be running along the stretch. No freight trains 
or other type of, um, of transportation. So we have a plan start of construction somewhere between the years 25 to 27. So uh, that is a goal that we have to try to achieve this. Next slide, please. You can move to the next slide again, and then I will hand over to my colleague, Thomas. Yeah, thank you very much, Jessica. Uh, hi, everybody. Nice to be here. Um, as you can see, this is our uh, investigation area. Uh, and for those who follow us on our website or Instagram and so on, you now can see that uh, before we had several corridors, but now we have come to import important milestone in our uh, assignment that we have reached. So we have now a proposal for ranking location alternatives for the new uh, railway between Gothenburg and Barros. And uh, in this autumn and spring, uh, in the autumn of 2021 and spring of 22, we will now go uh, forward to the next two formal steps, approval of the environmental impact assessment and review of those. And as you know, the localization study, uh, we have done an evaluation between Gothenburg and Bros. Uh, several cor corridors has been compared with different criteria, economic, environmental impact, sustainability, and several our criteria. So uh, now we are able to decide which one that we have recommended. And later, the railway plan will be defined, uh, define the railway within this corridor. Next, please. Uh, and one challenge of uh, our uh, stretch is our landscape. Uh, the landscape between Gothenburg and Bros is very hilly, so there will be a lot of bridges and tunnels. So as in the Eastern Link, also the handling of masses would be a key issue. Uh, and in this, uh, due to the uh, handling of masses uh, and the mass surplus, uh, we will participate, participate actively uh, uh, on the handling of mass surplus, uh, stone and soil, which cannot be used in the, on the site. Uh, a strategy and approach for handling in the masses has just been adopted by the national on a national basis uh, for the new main lines, and this will be a framework for us at uh, Traffic Verket, our consultants and entrepreneurs, to achieve an, our goals due to the climate and environmental goals due to the mass handling. And the next deep step uh, would be produce a governing documents for a new uniform agenda within the new uh, main lines due to the mass handling. Next uh, picture, please. And Jessica, over to you. Thank you, Thomas. So um, we have quite a lot of challenges, of course, that we're facing in the Gotham Bros project and, of course, in the whole new mainline system. So this is not a, a mutually exclusive list. It only serves as examples. Um, Thomas already spoke about the topography, uh, the considerable environmental impact that we have our, ourselves decided that this project will have. Uh, construction will be taking place in certain areas along the stretch with existing traffic, which of course also poses a challenge for us to, to manage that in a, in a constructive and effective way. We have many, many stakeholders uh, along the whole stretch, um, for various uh, categories, of course. Uh, several travel centers, of course, that will be constructed. Uh, packaging and contracts that Johan spoke of earlier, of course, is also key uh, when it comes to both the consulting contracts and construction contracts going forward. Top speed I've already mentioned, uh, and also uh, Thomas spoke about the mass handling. And something also that is key is, of course, um, managing the risk of limited resources and competences on both sides when it comes to supply market, but also for us within Traffic Vecchia to, to always maintain uh, a good resource um, uh, capability, accessibility, and, and also for us to, to uh, enable uh, US suppliers to uh, supply us with the best competences uh, possible. So um, yeah, we can take the next slide, please. 
So, of course, there will be many constructions in the Gothenburg Boros as well once we get to that phase. And uh, what we can give you information today is that we see there will be quite a few tunnels and the lengths will be uh, shorter tunnels, 300 meters up to very long tunnels, about 9,000 meters. Of course, some bridges as well. You saw the uh, image that Thomas spoke about, about topography, uh, hilly, hilly landscape, which means that we will need quite a lot of bridges as well, both short bridges and longer bridges. Uh, and uh, three stations uh, are evaluated to be built. And there are five municipalities that are affected um, by these um, stations. And of course, what will be happening along the stretch. Next slide, please. So, Localization study ongoing uh, in the uh, final stages, of course, of that uh, that work. So what the next phase will be determined of is, of course, procuring uh, several contracts for the production of railway plan, environmental impact assessment, and preliminary design. Can somebody please switch off their mic microphone, please? Thank you. Next slide, please. Yeah, so we will be uh, packaging all these products in the same packages and procuring several of these. We see a lot of synergies uh, and also more effectiveness in in the contracts, um, procuring them in this, in this way and having the contract comprised of these three products. Next slide, please. So if we take a look at, of course, how many contracts, procurements we see going forward, uh, when it comes to the railway plan packages, um, at the moment we see four different contracts. Um, things may change, we don't know, but that is what, our, what we're working towards at the moment. We have, I'm gonna be uh, showing you shortly uh, what we have ongoing and what, are, what is being planned. Variable fee uh, for these contracts. Uh, when it comes to the construction phase, Historically, Trafic Varkid mainly uses design and build contracts. Sometimes we have ECI contracts as well, uh, early contract involvement. Uh, but the most likelihood is design and build. But of course, we have some performance contracts as well, as you once spoke about earlier with Eastlink. Uh, that could highly be uh, feasible here as well in Gothenburg Bros. Uh, the total cost uh, in the 2020 year level right now is uh, four to four and a half. 0.5 billion uh, euros. Next slide, please. So the current division and procurement order of the railway plans, um, as you have seen in our procurement plan as well, when it comes to different time schedule and times, etc., looked like this uh, up till recently. Uh, if we take the next slide, please. So we have a current situation um, right now that you probably, if you've been uh, watching our website and also other information that has been uh, announced, is that we decided last week, the 10th of November, to cancel the procurement that we had ongoing of the second package, a railway plan from, for the stretch Mundal landwetter flygplatz or airport. Uh, this was due to uh, external circumstances beyond our control. And, uh, the general, what we can say is that the municipality of Harid opposed the high-speed railway through the municipality, and after many discussions and uh, dialogues with uh, affected parties, um, we decided that it was best to um, to cancel that procurement. But we've only paused the works in Harida. We will not have not cancelled them. We've only paused them uh, for the time being. And, and as soon as we know more, and uh, the government in Sweden has made their decision regarding our localization. Uh, and the placement of the railway uh, works will uh, commence uh, again in Harida. So um, it's more, when we know more, you will know more as well. So keep an eye on the website and more information about this is on our website right now, both on our Swedish version and in the English version as well. Next slide, please. So remember the slide we, sh we saw recently about the current uh, uh, division of railway plans. So this is what we are working towards right now. So in the West, number one, you see the ongoing procurement that we have for Mundal, Almedal Mundal, which we had last day for submitting tenders this, this Monday. So that one is going according to plan. Then if we look to the East, we have two uh, planned procurements. Number two is for Boros, 
which comprises the station that I mentioned. And number three is Bollebygd. And then these both two um, procurements or contracts uh, comprise uh, one municipality each. So we have Borås number two and Bollebygd number three. Next slide, please. Yes, current and planned procurements in the upcoming years. We can take the next slide. So if you, if you take a look at this timeline of these three packages that I've mentioned, we have, of course, Amadon Mondal, which is ongoing right now. It's not possible to, to participate in that one anymore. So that one is, is closed, but we have the next two. Uh, Boros, which we are planning to uh, uh, add, uh, announce or publicize uh, the uh, invitation to tender on uh, the beginning of January of 2022. And then, of course, the Bollebygd um, invitation somewhere in the spring or uh, summer of 2022. So uh, keep an eye out on our, uh, on our website, the procurement plan, which will be updated uh, this month. Uh, next slide, please. So just briefly, the content in these uh, procurements. This is the one that is ongoing that uh, you cannot participate in. But the setup is similar for all, all of these contracts. Uh, we have a uh, variable fee, as I mentioned. I have my daughter here at home, so if you hear her in the background, <laughs> that's why. Uh, negotiated procedure in two phases. Uh, we will not be using our pre-qualification system, TransQ. Uh, we will be doing a, uh, uh, our own pre-qualification stage in phase one, and then phase two, where uh, the qualified and selected suppliers will receive the tender documents and be able to submit tender. Um, next slide, please. So this is the same same setup, but as you can see, Boros will now become the new second package that we procure, and, and Bolivy will be number three. So if you take the next slide again, Alan. Yeah, so the setup is the same, but we have one, two, three, Almadon, Mondal, Boros, Bolivy, uh, as it stands right now. Next slide. So Camilla also mentioned this uh, in the beginning of this webinar that uh, we uh, have all our planned and current procurements in our procurement plan on uh, Traffic Vagget's website. Uh, so keep an eye out there regularly for uh, business opportunities and uh, upcoming procurements for Gothenburg Bros. Like I said, I will be updating now during November. So in the beginning of December, you will see uh, updates uh, for the upcoming procurements. Next slide, please. And this is the overall time schedule. Um, if you look to other activities uh, across from, uh, apart from procurement, Locus Jason study, like Thomas spoke about, being finalized during next year. We had a, a significant amount of early dialogues with supplier market last fall, and uh, we participate in these types of webinars uh, regularly, and we are gonna have more supplier dialogues going forward. So keep an eye out on our website for that. Uh, of course, procurement of these contracts for railway plans uh, between uh, this year and 2024. And then, of course, uh, working on the production and termination of these plans from 2022 and onwards. And then, of course, looking forward to the construction phase. We will be having dialogues with, uh, with uh, construction companies and also consultants, of course. Uh, procurement strategy will be produced and decided and publicized. And, of course, procurement of these contracts. And then, hopefully, uh, construction somewhere between 25 27 as I've already mentioned. Next slide, please. So, of course, uh, like Camilla also mentioned, uh, many different ways to, to uh, become a supplier to Trafik Verket. The one, uh, one of our largest tips, of course, is to align yourself with a Swedish partner. Uh, when it comes to the western part of Sweden, here you have some uh, good contact info for, for two organizations that uh, work very closely with uh, Swedish Swedish suppliers and also can facilitate the contact with them uh, if you need that assistance. So they are, you're welcome to contact these two people uh, you can see on the screen. Next slide, please. And of course, you can follow Gotham River Ross social media. We have our website, we have an English version. We have Twitter, Instagram account. You can contact me as head of procurement directly and our program manager, Sarah Disner. Uh, and the web page, of course, for new main lines as well to keep yourself updated about what happens there. Next slide. And there I would like to thank you uh, and also on behalf of my colleagues, Thomas and Maria, for uh, your attention. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you 
uh, in, in the Gothenburg Bros project, hopefully. Thank you very much to all of you. Uh, we will finish now with uh, the last of our new main lines, the Hesselholm Loon project. So please, Klaus, uh, you're back on. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I'm back here. Uh, and uh, I have with me today uh, that will join us for, for our Q&A session, uh, Sophia Bremer. Would you like to introduce yourself, Sophia? Yes, hello, everybody. My name is Sophia Bremer, and I'm a project manager of Hesselholmland project. And I will help class on the question and answer part if it's necessary. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sophia. Well, I'm uh, Klaus Anderson, and I'm a head of procurement of this project as well. You see, we have some shortages of staff in Sweden, so that's why we're looking abroad to find help, of course. Uh, let's start with this picture. Now, please go back to the previous one. Thank you. Uh, this is the southernmost part of Sweden, and, and maybe if you have good eyes in the end, you can see the Öresund bridge that goes from Malmö to Copenhagen. And uh, we look forward to somewhere in the not near future, but in the future, the possibility to take a high speed train uh, that way over the bridge through Denmark, Germany, uh, Holland, Belgium, and then through the Eurotunnel all the way to your lovely country in England. So we, we hope that will happen. It will take some time, of course, but there will be a nice possibility when we have that. Uh, okay, next slide, please. And you can click a couple of times here. Yeah. Uh, th this project is about uh, a 70 kilometers double track, and it's planned to be slab track, and we will go 320 kilometers high speed trains, and also some fast region trains, probably 250 kilometers. Uh, the plan start of construction is 2027 to 2029. We haven't changed that. We have some delay, delays that I will explain later, but uh, we still think we can start within that period. Next slide, please. Oh, this is the localization study that we are ongoing right now. Uh, and we, we have an evaluation area uh, between Hesselholm and Lund, and as we do in this, uh, cases we will compare several corridors with different criteria and to decide which one to recommend. You can, if you notice, the picture is that the stretch, the, the area is uh, from the beginning it was 70 kilometers and three, three, 30 kilometers wide. But there has become a little tip on the top here and also one on the bottom. So it has increased now to 80 kilometers long instead. And this has caused some delay, delays in this, uh, this particular project. You can see the next picture, please. Yeah, this is the original uh, 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 evaluation area. It, it's not a big difference, but uh, of course, when you already have procured your consultant, it will put you in a position where there is a big risk of delays. So we have had some delays here, a year between one and two years. Uh, but uh, I should talk about the landscape here as well. Um, this evaluation area is quite flat and two almost equal large pieces. In the north up here by Hesselholm, we have a forest area and in the south, north of Lund, it's a farmland that looks much like uh, some parts of your southern your southern parts of your country. And uh, here is not a tunnel. I, I like to point that out because people think of this tunnel. It's not likely there will be a tunnel in this project. And you can compare uh, the area to the Gothenburg Boroughs area. The landscape is very different from this. Next picture, please. <clears throat> yeah, this is what we have left at the moment. We have uh, deselect a lot of corridors. So uh, we're working with the one you can see here, and they're working is pro progressing all the time. Uh, we will have another consultation with the public uh, around in, in the start of 23, uh, or, or in the end of 22, sub 23, 23. And after that, we will finalize the localization study, and it will be ended in the end of 2023. 
due to these delays should have been done earlier. But uh, <clears throat> of course, when we are ready, we will only have a small strip here uh, to fill the railroad with in. All right, next please. Uh, what are we construction? Well, as I said, zero fuel tunnels. Uh, it's not likely it will be in a tiny. It's still not deselected all the options for tunnel, but uh, we don't think we will have a tunnel here. And then we have about 5% bridges. Uh, unless we build low bridges, we still, it's not taken out of the question. Uh, there are a couple of long bridges over uh, river valleys and so, uh, one, two kilometer long bridges. Uh, Otherwise, it's most the normal bridges when we have crossings and so. And then 70 kilometer and slab track, we have two stations, and about 10 municipalities are affected uh, during the localization study, but some of them are no longer affected so due to the deselections. All right, please, next picture. Yeah, in, <clears throat> as you can see, the localization study. Well, it's still within, it will be finalized in the end of 2023, but there will be some work probably for, for the consultant also in the start of 2024. Um, so there is the delay. Uh, and we have already had a supply dialogue this uh, winter, it's earlier this winter, and we are planning another one, well, end this year or probably more beginning of next year. Uh, we are working with the procurement strategies and the procurement of railway plans is now uh, postponed until the end of this period, 2023-2024. We look at a, uh, to publish the first procurement of the railway plan in the end of 2023, the way it looks at the moment. And then the others will follow and it's not yet decided whether we will have three or four, probably not more than four. So the next one should be 24. We won't be able to start work with railway plans until 2024. And it's a long period for railway plans. And the reason is that we're still considering a, a long railway plan between the outskirts of Hensleholm and the outskirts of, of Lund. Uh, it's still in, an option, but I think most likely we will divide it in two. Uh, and then 25 to 29, we will start, well, supply dialogues will go on when it's needed through all the period. But this is the, the period where we start to have supply dialogues also with contractors. And then we will start procurement of contract, the so construction contracts probably 27. And as I said before, start of construction 27 to 20, 20, 29. Okay, next please. Oh, we also have some challenges. Uh, the travel centers, where should they be located? Uh, and uh, this is being studied in the localization study. Uh, but uh, it's a challenge still. Um, and the soil type here is a bit difficult for, for fixed track or slab track. We have a moraine clay that sometimes is rather silty in, in uh, specific areas. So that's a problem that we need to uh, take care of. And then, of course, mass handling, we have a big, big surplus. Uh, and that's we build a low bridge. And we have a lack of rock material in this area of the country. Uh, next, please. Well, the contract for railway plans, we plan to do three to five, as I said before, probably four, uh, and they will be procured uh, in a similar way that Gothenburg burns, the variable fee and a pre-qualification, and then uh, uh, after that invitation to, to bid. I'm not sure that we will uh, decrease the number of, of uh, bidders from the Pre-qualification, but we will have a pre-qualification in, in any case, uh, so that the, the bidders know that they will not be uh, disqualified in the bidding. Mm -hmm. And uh, construction, <clears throat> we will mainly use design and build contracts uh, or build contracts, uh, bid and build, or whatever you call them. Um, 
and maybe uh, the contractual involvement contracts we are interested in, in doing that we'll see what what uh, the strategies uh, more central in the in the new main list will, will end up on i think it's suitable some of these uh, contracts for uh, the contractor involvement um, and um, Well, can I go back again? Please. Thank you. Uh, and uh, and the, the cost for this account, this uh, stretch, this program is, well, now it went off. Well, I, I do it uh, verbally. It's uh, 1.9 billion euros, but that's only to a, a, a point a bit south of Heslon. So it doesn't include the uh, Hesselholm station and the tracks through Hesselholm. That will probably add another billion euros before this is uh, finalized. But in, in, in the calculation from the uh, previous studies, we did only calculate up to a point south of Hesselholm. And uh, there are a few pictures. Contact the information to me, which you already had. And then there are also some uh, some uh, context to uh, uh, the South Swedish uh, Chamber of Commerce, etc. So you can find partners in this area as well. All right, thank you. I hope this worked in the end here. Thank you, Klaus. Uh, Alan, we've lost uh, the picture, so we can't see the presentations anymore. Could you look into that, please? Yes, I apologize. It, it, for some okay. reason, PowerPoint stopped, so I'm just trying to fix it now. Okay, good. But as Klaus said, uh, you will find contact information uh, for valuable contacts and also the contact information to Klaus. Uh, so don't hesitate and contact us uh, when you get all the information. I think that we would like to open up for a Q&A session, Alan. Um, so I don't know if you have gotten any um, questions in the chat box. Yes, I think there were one or two. Um, just bear me a moment. I did see something just now. So yes, from uh, I'll take the latter one that just popped in. Um, so from Antonius, um, are there any thoughts to design and build all stations in the schemes that have been presented today under a separate scheme or one directorate to organize centrally their design, taking into account all sustainability, environmental and good practice issues under specialized teams, which may lead to cost savings and better functioning in community hubs? Has Traffic Vackett thought, thought of this option? And if yes, will there be more value? I don't know who can answer that question. Johan, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this. Well, uh, not at the Eastlink project. We don't have those. Those are separate. And then you have to remember also that uh, Trafik Verkes responsibility is uh, the, the track and uh, the platforms and platform roofs and escalators and so on, but the actual houses and buildings around the station, that's not our responsibility. That's that's the community, the municipalities or, or private uh, owners. So, so it, it's, uh, we, we, can't, we can't have a, a joint concept for the whole of the East Link, I don't think so. Uh, and, and also we have, uh, at the East Link, we have uh, two very small stations, and then we have two uh, very big travel centers in, in Linköping and Norrköping as well. So, uh, so, so for the East Link, it, it, it's not, it's not uh, feasible to do that. Uh, when it comes to Gothenburg boroughs, uh, we'll have to concur with you on there. Uh, we have, like you once said, uh, we're responsible for certain certain parts, crucial parts, of course, of the of the station, uh, but not all parts. So uh, municipalities and, of course, other other stakeholders are involved, uh, which makes it uh, more difficult to to have a cohesive and uh, uh, approach where we would procure, um, so to say, a large contract just focusing on. On the station element, but when it comes to sustainability as an as an element, of course, and of course the climate issues, 
Um, of course, we work over over the boundaries, and uh, we, we in 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 all, in all the three programs within New Main Lines, but also New Main Lines as a whole, has as a as a main focus, obviously. And of course, as the 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 way we um, design the stations, of course, and then and how they will be placed, et cetera, of course, is is a key is key to have the uh, sustainable sustainability focus as a part of that. Um, I don't know if uh, my colleague Thomas would like to to add anything to uh, to to this question. Uh, yes, Jessica. Uh, yes, of course, we work with the municipalities and the uh, stakeholders as well, of course, uh, due to the stress and we have dialogue. We have, for example, a station. Uh, uh, one of our station is at uh, Landvetter Airport and there we have uh, 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 dialogue with the stakeholders there, and we have, they have goals uh, due to the uh, goals how much how much train they will. Today they have a lot of uh, cars coming to the airport, lots of uh, areas for parking and, and so on. And in the future they have goals that we discuss together uh, due to the how much uh, traffic the the train will take over for the uh, for the cars in the future and also in uh, every hour station uh, dialogues due to the uh, accessibility of the station and the uh, safety and feeling secure in the uh, in the station due to the social uh, sustainability for example so we have dialogues, uh, of course, and uh, as well in the Eastern Link, of course, due to these kind of questions. Yeah. All right, uh, Klaus here in Eslam. Well, I just like to well, I understand the question. It's a, it's a good question in many ways, and uh, it could be a possibility to have common design for, for parts of the station for various re reasons, among them the ones that were mentioned in the question. But I think that would not be a question to pose to the three different programs, but rather a question for the entire program uh, near Istanbul, if they want to decide to have some form of carbon design. So uh, uh, otherwise, I think it's a good question. Thank you. So uh, do we have any more questions? I, I could just chip in there myself on the, on the end of that, that uh, what, what class was referring to uh, for the benefit of the UK audience who perhaps don't know is that these three projects were all part of the se sort of separately in the main major projects division up to about a year ago. Um, and then Traffic Verket created a new division basically to house them as one program. So that's probably the level at which to pitch this kind of idea I'd have thought like, like class just said. And yes, uh, another question in here is, um, and this is something that does come up, to, <laughs> uh, is asked to me every now and again, to be quite honest, uh, as time goes on. Um, why does Traffic Verket do all tender documents in Swedish when aiming for global suppliers? And also communication in English instead of Swedish could help. And in fairness, on the latter point, we are doing this today. So that does come yeah. out well, somewhat, just, but the yeah. first part. <laughs> yeah, well, Jessica Dessin is here. Uh, I think... Um, we have we have a, a language law in Sweden, um, which dictates quite clearly uh, Swedish in a large respect. And also our legal department has also determined that when it comes to the contract language that it is always Swedish. Uh, we have historically, uh, when it comes to larger projects, uh, have had certain tender documents uh, translated to English, but it's always a Swedish version that is, um, which is the, the leading version. Um, and um, depending upon, of course, uh, what type of project, what type of challenge we're, we're facing, um, it's easier to have uh, more English present than in other cases. But of course, uh, from our perspective in the new main lines is, uh, of course, that we we want to have as many suppliers as we can and, and uh, gradually working in more uh, working language English. Um, I can only say for the procurements that we're doing right now in Gotham of Bros that we that we have some uh, English documents uh, in, in the tender documents. Uh, of course, in the pre-qualification stage, we have a assignment orientation that was completely in English. Uh, and then also we have uh, opened up for a question and answer uh, during the tender period uh, in English as well. But of course, also with the Swedish uh, translation also. So um, 
This is a this is an important question. Uh, I think it's a great question to be asked, and uh, I know that Camilla is working hard with this as well, um, reducing these barriers. Uh, I, how how what are your views in uh, the East Link, for example, you on on this uh, question? Uh, I did miss the the last you said. Uh, One, I was wondering again. in the East Link, well, how how are you reasoning when it comes to uh, using uh, more English? Uh, both in the procurements, but also in the contracts itself. I, th I think we will uh, follow the the traffic work uh, mm. line here, and and but yeah. we, uh, we will we will allow English on a day to day basis out, out on sites and so on. But then yeah. you also have when it comes to yeah. work uh, close to the the, the railway. Uh, with traffic running, you have to have certain uh, function that mm. works with Swedish. So, yeah. But all like former, I, yeah. but all doc, former documents and and uh, me minutes from meetings and so on will be in in, in Swedish. So. Yeah, so we, that, we always. That, yeah. Yes. Sorry. That, sorry. You that, that, yeah. That's that's what it, it's very important to have Swedish. Uh, mm. Employees or or uh, or uh, Swedish partners. Yeah, like I said there in the beginning, that uh, the contract language um, is is Swedish, and uh, important to have uh, uh, on your side a contract manager uh, and people in a leading function that uh, can uh, both communicate in the, both writ both oral and and written Swedish. But then, of course, when it comes to other types of functions, then there can be other possibilities of having uh, English as a working language, for example. So. Um, it's like you once said. We look individually for uh, every each each contract specifically, and uh, and of course on a larger scale, uh, we, we try to we try to minimize uh, barriers as much as we can. But um, like we have certain uh, we have laws, we have regulations, especially when it comes to the railway. Um, certain things we just can't um, move towards uh, English on a on a hundred percent scale. No. Oh, I just like to add that, well, of course, we, we all love to do this in English. Uh, but the problem is that there's this thing called lawyers. And if we have our documents in English, uh, our, our lawyers will come in a disadvantaged position. So our, our head uh, law, law department will never allow us to uh, only use English documents. I, I, I don't think that will ever happen. But, but what we try to do, as what my colleague said, to have a lot more English spoken on the work sites, because that's all, as in many parts of the world, it's the most common language for everyone. So, uh, but the documents, in the writ written documents, also during the execution of the contracts will be in Swedish. The weather environments will be in Swedish. So, but uh, we like to talk English. We do our best. Thank you. Alan, I can see that there are a lot of questions in the chat box, and I don't know if we have the time to answer all the questions at the moment, and maybe we could uh, get them from you and get back to um, everyone with answers to all the questions. We really appreciate all the questions, your comments, uh, being engaged in um, our businesses and wanting to enter our market. I don't know what to say, Alan. That's probably quite a good idea. I have got to the very bottom. I've been kind of scrolling through, but I did see from Wayne, uh, there was a question about any UK companies already engaged with Trafik Verkin on the various schemes. I can say, at least from my perspective, um, with companies that are sort of within the sphere that, that I come into contact with, I know that Jacobs are working on the, the new main lines um, as, a, as a kind of advisor. Uh, Atkins, which obviously has a pretty substantial Swedish business already, is a pretty substantial uh, supplier to Trafik Verkin. Anyway, uh, we've worked with Weed Free on track in the maintenance side, which is keeping the uh, vegetation off the rail, if that's any help to you, Wayne. Um, and no doubt other companies too. But yes, we'll, I'll make a note of the rest of the remaining questions, try to get them to the right people or via Camilla, and then we'll get back to you as soon as I can. That sounds good. I don't know about you, but maybe we need a short break before you continue with uh, the other uh, well, we're going to continue with Business Sweden. Uh, so we will wait for the break and continue with Business Sweden, Alan. I know you have their presentation. So I will hand over to uh, Ulrike Halslem and Madeleine Slumbay. Thank you very much, Camilla uh, and Traffic Racket. And also big thank you to the uh, British Embassy for inviting us. 
Uh, I'm very happy to be here and to meet all of you digitally uh, here today. My name is Ulrika Hallström. Uh, I work as a project manager at Business Sweden and is responsible for a program for enabling international companies access to the vast opportunities presented in Sweden uh, within infrastructure and construction. If we please uh, move to the next slide. Excellent. So today I will talk about uh, business opportunities in Sweden uh, guidance in expansion. And my colleague Madeleine Strömberg will talk about uh, Sweden's financing opportunities for international projects. If we jump to the next slide. Short about one back, please. Uh, short about Business Sweden or the Swedish Trade and Invest Council. Uh, one more forward piece. I don't know if I have a lag maybe on my side. So Business Sweden is jointly owned uh, by the Swedish state through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs uh, and the Swedish industry uh, through the Swedish Foreign Trade Association. And we have a mandate and a mission to help international companies gain access to uh, the Swedish market and help companies uh, established in Sweden to expand uh, in Sweden and internationally. Uh, we have offices across Sweden uh, and internationally who are supporting international companies in assessing opportunities in Sweden uh, and enter the Swedish market. Here in the UK, our offices are in, uh, in London, uh, where we have a team of around 15 people. And uh, maybe some of you have met the colleagues uh, here. If we skip to the next uh, slide, we have a special program uh, for opportunities in infrastructure and construction uh, because Sweden is launching a large number of new projects and where we are in need of international uh, competences to reach sustainability and innovation goals and also to secure capacity. Many of these projects are presented here today by uh, Trafik Vacket. Camilla mentioned 62 billion euros in projects in current plan and a new plan with almost 80 billion euros uh, but we also, uh, for example, are building some 600,000 uh, new housing units until 2029. So we work with international companies in understanding the opportunities in Sweden and uh, securing a successful uh, market entry. And this is everything from uh, understanding the potential of the market, what projects are relevant for you, uh, prerequisites to participate in tenders, and what could be, for example, five to ten year uh, project pipeline. We also work with the questions of choosing a strategy. In many cases, our international companies are looking for local strategic partners uh, for growth in Sweden, but it can also be uh, defining an operational setup, for example. We work with the, the establishment of a legal entity and navigating local networks, uh, securing lo local talent uh, for the Swedish operations. This is a question we touched upon a few times today as well. And finally, we work with established companies in growth strategies and strengthening uh, the position. We continuously uh, publish market uh, insights. Uh, and if we please skip to the next slide, we also have uh, a digital tool uh, available where you can see upcoming and ongoing projects in Sweden filtered into different categories, uh, different sizes, contract types and phases. And um, so this presentation will be shared with you after and then you can use the, the link if you like and test out uh, the tool as well. Uh, when it comes to further investigating and assessing the opportunities in Sweden, uh, you're welcome to reach out to me. Um, and with that said, we can skip to the next slide. And I will hand over to my colleague uh, Marlene Stamberg, uh, who is part of the team leading Sweden's EPC program, and we'll talk about the opportunities for collaboration uh, with Sweden in international projects. Thank you, Rika. Um, hi, my name is Marlene Stamberg. Uh, I work at Business Sweden and project manage the, the EPC program that we have together with EKN, SEK and Thread Fund. And this program focuses on projects outside of Sweden. So I will discuss a bit about financing solution and other support that we can provide for projects abroad. So if you go to the next side, a slide here. Um, 
Uh, I can see that the slice isn't really, um, I think that something happened probably <laughs> when, when they've been copy pasted in. Is it okay, Alan, if I share my screen and my PowerPoint? Uh, we can give that a try if you'd like. Yes, Just perfect. Second, I'll stop mine. Hang on. Yes, I'm going to show you. Perfect. Um, please confirm that you see my screen. Yes, we can yes. see it. Perfect. And now it's the screen as well. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Team Sweden, what is it and who are we? Well, Team Sweden is a network of government authorities, organizations and industry to jointly promote Swedish exports. And within the EPC program uh, and Team Sweden, we have Business Sweden. We uh, help Swedish companies grow global sales. So we, have, we also support uh, international companies to invest and expand in Sweden. Then we have EKM, the Swedish Export Credit Agency, uh, and they, they provide guarantees uh, to cover risks for projects. So they, they insure projects. Uh, and then we have SDK, the Swedish Export Credit Corporation, who provides the funds for projects. So they act as the bank in this case. And also Thread Fund, the, the Swedish Development Finance Institution, who, who can offer grants uh, for, for sustainability and feasibility studies in growth markets. And here on the right hand side, we see the program stakeholders uh, and the synergies for cooperation that we have. So we have the Swedish supplier network, uh, the sub supplier to the EPC. Uh, we have the international banks, uh, commercial banks, who they, they usually or almost always act as the arranger uh, for the loan. And then we have the global EPCs, the so called main contractors and also Team Sweden, and then we, of course, support with financing and, and the Swedish uh, supplier contact. Um, and on this slide, we, we, we see a bit of our value proposition that we offer. And if you start here with the value proposition to commercial banks, the international banks who arrange these loans for projects, well, we have a really competitive Swedish offering uh, for, from, from EKN and SEK. It's AAA rated and it's reliable, flexible, and competitive um, in comparison with other ECAs. Uh, we also have a strong support from the Swedish government. And we seek partnership with EPCs who have the ability to deliver turnkey projects and have a strong presence in local markets. We also require, as Camilla was mentioning here in the beginning of the, of the, of the webinar, sustainability is key. Uh, and, and we ask both that the EPC has an edge in sustainability and also we know that Sweden has many world leading companies who are in fact very sustainable. Uh, and of course we require Swedish interest and supply uh, in projects uh, to be able to, to have this export financing for projects. And then the benefits of course of Swedish suppliers which is being seen as a strategic partner to the EPC and, and, and getting access to the network and, and new business opportunities internationally. Uh, on this slide, we, we see the, the sectors that we are focusing in uh, within the EPC program. These are sectors uh, that Sweden has very strong companies within. Uh, and here below, we see some examples of, of, of the companies and we call these so-called anchor suppliers who can provide quite a lot of content to, to projects. And we have transport and here we have railway signaling and rolling stock. We also have BRT uh, and airport and air traffic management. Within power, we have a lot of solar, wind, hydro and gas generation solutions. Also, when it comes to transmission and distribution uh, substations, we have, we have many companies that can offer uh, products for this. Um, and then we have something we call special construction. This is bridges, roads, tunneling, uh, can be flyovers also. Um, we have hospitals and in particular medical equipment is some, some, it's an area where Sweden is, is very strong. Oh, and of, of course, also agriculture and water management. And these are also examples of projects that we as Team Sweden uh, have been involved in. And, and not to forget the engineering service providers, pr providers that also were mentioned here previously, Sveco and AFRI. Uh, this, is, this slide kind of contains all the Swedish interest and Swedish content that, that we count in projects. Um, and here on this slide, I will go very fast through this, uh, being mindful of the time. Um, here we see on the left hand side a bit how we uh, see the EPC program and how we see the export financing solution from Sweden working. Um, and, and to mention also that OECD, they, 
they, uh, they, uh, they came out with a new rule uh, that says that uh, ECAs can now cover up to 50% of local costs of the export value. Uh, and this change reflects uh, the reality of today's complex global value chains and, and also the multinational sourcing uh, in large infra infrastructure projects that are often required. Um, and also here to highlight again, sustainability requirements according to international standards, for example, IFC, IFC uh, performance standard, um, and, and also how we together with EPC can, can, can provide a very competitive uh, solution to the end customer and buyer. And uh, yeah, so, so here on the left hand side, you see how EKN provides a fund, how EKN uh, provides the guarantee to the commercial banks who in their their part then provides a loan to the buyer owner or end customer. And this is what we focus on in the EPC program. And this is what we call the buyer's credit when we finance projects uh, and, and also require them almost 30% Swedish content um, in this as well. Um, I think here, this is our bragging slide. Uh, the purpose of the EPC program is to identify and win EPC led projects and and, and have the Swedish supply uh, supported by Swedish financing. And we aim to close five deals per year. And uh, since the mid of 2019, when we started this program, uh, we've closed uh, deals to a total value of 2 billion euro. Um, thank you. And over to you, I will stop sharing my screen here. <laughs> yeah, maybe you can share just for the last slides as well. Yeah. And yeah. so just to sum up, I mean, we have uh, teams across Sweden and, and globally including a large team uh, here in London and that is working with international companies in assessing the opportunities and expanding to Sweden and with Swedish financing to enable uh, international projects. So we hope that now uh, you have a better understanding of how you can engage with us and what we can support with. Our contact details will be shared hereafter and we really hope that you will reach out to uh, Madeleine and, and myself to discuss your plans uh, for Sweden and your international projects. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lika and Madeleine. Um, so Alan, I think that was the end of our presentations from Trafikverket and Business Sweden. Um, and I think that you would like to have a short break before you continue with your presentations about uh, some other projects that might be of interest for uh, our UK suppliers. Well, I, w I was thinking uh, to do that, but then um, to have a short break, I mean, but then yeah. I just popped in the chat to see just whether people viewing the participants here would like to prefer that I skip the break and just jump straight okay. into it. And okay. I got six likes on that. So I think that's a reasonable indication that that's probably <laughs> the case. So okay. um, I'd like to, uh, I don't know whether the Traffic Vekit uh, participants would like to remain on the line for this or would prefer to leave. Uh, either, either way, you're very welcome um, to stay on. It won't be very long, no more than half an hour, probably about 20 minutes. I'll whip through it pretty quick. But otherwise, if anybody is about to leave, I'd like to thank you very much for, for joining us today and uh, for giving us some great presentations, very uh, rich with information. And um, yeah, really good, really good. Uh, overview of a lot, a lot of different developments. So I will just work out how to share my screen again. Bear with me just one moment. OK, so that's the last of that one. Great. So uh, the three projects that I kind of picked out uh, to just talk about a little bit, one of them is actually a Traffic Vekit project, and that's um, the bridge at Robert, Roberts Fosch, which is part of the North Bothany Line project, which we didn't go through today. Uh, in the north of Sweden. Uh, also the Stockholm Metro extension, which had its supplier day just a couple or three weeks ago, uh, which some of you may have joined, but probably not not all. Um, and also um, the Region City project in Gothenburg. So it's not a lot of detail here. It's just to make people a little bit aware of you know, some other kinds of things that are going on. So basically the Bridget Roberts Fosch, I, I saw some information on it just, I think it was last week or possibly the week before. Um, and it's going to be a 850 meter long bridge in a very natural landscape, kind of reflecting in some of what we've seen earlier, really. But this is in the north of Sweden rather than the, rather than the south. Um, it's going to be a parallel commission. So the first step will be that uh, you know, interested parties, interested teams can put in uh, an expression of interest. From that, the jury, uh, which is made up of um, a number of traffic vehicle people, other experts, will uh, select five people to be part of a parallel commission. Again, I, I also advise Swedish partners on this one too. Um, it's 
very similar to what I, I, wrote, I wrote in the chat and what other people have kind of mentioned. Um, but basically, there's a, a quick timeline. I don't expect you to read all of that and remember it all now. But at the bottom, there's a link to the notice. So that's all going to be in the presentation that I'll send out. So review it at your leisure if you're interested uh, in bridge projects in particular and, and the, the design of them. So that was pretty quickly done. Um, the Stockholm Metro extension. Now that's a pretty substantial project, regional project obviously, obviously in Stockholm. Um, the biggest project that Stockholm's are currently undertaking as far as I know. Uh, in particular, well, most of it uh, is at a, at a stage where they're really starting to procure the contractors. Um, the Elfwer or Freedomsplan Elfwer line is at an earlier stage. Uh, they have um, commissioned a feasibility study by, to be carried out by WSP, but apart from that, it's, it's pretty early on. So there's a good chance there for consultants and architects and other people in the design sphere uh, to get involved in that. Um, I mean, of course, they're on, if anybody's from the more the contractor side, the M&E and all that kind of thing, then then um, there will be op options there. Op I'm not covering that here, but that, that I would recommend looking at the um, the full presentation from the supplier day. I've, I've just taken a little bit of it here, basically borrowed it essentially from them. Um, good to know that they do a little bit of a different kind of process when it comes to procuring consultants or anybody with cons consultancy services, essentially, um, using a platform called Workforce Logic. So a supplier joins Workforce Logic, uh, registers there. That then almost seems to act a bit like a pre-qualification system for con consultants, as far as I can tell. And from there, um, the, yeah, the tenders are then, then sent through via that, via, via the suppliers on that system or to the suppliers on that system. Um, yeah, there's the link to the full, um, the full uh, presentation, but this is a little, a little bit of it. So the, um, that's the map of the Stockholm Metro, as it will be. You currently have the red line, green line, and blue line. The dotted parts uh, up in the top left there are the, the new parts. They're either, either new or being extended or being changed in some way. But the bit that's highlighted kind of blue and grey dotted line, that's this Freedom's Plan Elfquer part, which um, links up with an existing hub at Freedom's Plan uh, along the green line where it intersects with the blue line. It goes down to Lilia Holman. Um, which is on the red line currently, and then down to Elfwer, which is w a, a commuter station, uh, which is also where you find the Stockholm International um, Expo uh, arena. Um, you can see on the top right there, that's the kind of different alignments they've got kind of ongoing. So they're not really there yet. They're still kind of deciding where to go exactly. And they've got a few different options available to them. Um, on, the, on the consulting assignments, it seems that they've, tried to learn some lessons from the other stages that already got further ahead. So from what I understand, they've, the lesson they've learned is they need to break it down into smaller packages of work. Now that often goes against what I hear from a lot of UK companies about what they want to perhaps see, but this is what they've chosen to do. Because I think they found in previous earlier parts of this uh, program that they ended up having to work very much as a kind of convener and, and um, uh, working with the, the collaboration a lot more than they expected to. I think they, meant they expected to be quite hands-off, but they ended up to be quite hands-on, so they tried to approach, add that into their approach this time. So there's a bit of a, um, a timeline there on the, uh, the consulting assignments and also these phases. So you can see there are well, six different phases uh, stretching from 2022 to 2024. And the early parts of that are, are you know, 2022, 2023 are probably what you might be interested in, I would have thought. Just a little more. There's a bit again a bit more of a timeline. So uh, early on station layouts and engineering. As time goes on, railway plan, environmental permits, and hydrogeology, and then station design, more station design, and tunnel and track design. And then there's a little bit about there about the uh, this collaboration aspect. So the the client taking much a much more of an active role than than previously, as I've understood it, in order to. They're hoping to find some cost savings, some synergies, that kind of uh, good stuff. And then just moving swiftly on to uh, the Jan Houston Region City Project. Now, I actually got some information about this quite late on, so I actually thought it was a bit of an earlier stage than it is, um, and I was wrong, so I apologize for that. But uh, compared to the, the, the Stockholm equivalent, um, which some of you may know about, this one's a bit further along. So the two master plans have already been produced. One's been approved, but the other one's currently being appealed. So they're not quite sure how that's going to work out. 
but apparently there are a number of opportunities for a number of design of different buildings in the area um, with parallel commissions for those due to come out at, toward the end of 22 but depending on the outcome of the master plan according to my contact there so again they've got a pretty good website with um, you know it shows a lot of diagrams a lot of um, information about uh, about what they're planning so if anybody's interested in that please do take a look there and i think to be honest that was probably it for me i went, I went whipped through it pretty fast so if anybody does have any questions on any of that i can take that real quick i realize i did whip through it but um otherwise like i can say review it at your leisure in the in the uh in the uh presentation we'll be sending out and uh, then if you have any further questions after that then please do do let me know uh, is there anything for anyone just now? I can't see anything in the chat. If anybody has anything, please do put a hand up or, or something of that nature. Otherwise, we'll probably call it a, a day. Nothing obvious. OK. Oh, oh just uh, some comments. A big thank you to all the presenters from Wayne and uh, thanks as well from Nicholas. Uh, super. And Anya. Great. All right then. Well, once again, thank you to all the traffic vacant people uh, or colleagues, I should say, uh, pre pre presenters uh, for all your presentations. It was really super, and I hope next time we'll be able to do it um, uh, in real life, so to speak, um, physically, like we did in London a couple of years ago. Uh, unfortunately, we can't accommodate the one-to-ones like we did then on, on this occasion for obvious reasons, but uh, super nonetheless. And thank you to all of the uh, the viewers from the uh, UK side. I do hope you found it interesting. Uh, if you do have any questions. Um, please uh, do ask, um, drop me a line. You probably should already have my email from previous communications. Please, if you haven't already done so, connect with me on LinkedIn. I do put out various updates on there you know, fairly regularly about different things that I spot in the market. And um, yeah, I think that's that'll, we can stop there. Thanks very much. Do you have any last words, Camilla, at all? Seems like not. Okay, thank you very much and goodbye.